I cut my decorative cuts like this, see. I push it away from me. The right way to do it is like this. Towards you, and I can't do it that way. Because I never learned, see. So I, you, I push it away. Rex is a good guy, uh, he's a cowboy, he'd help anybody. If I have something, question, I'll run it by. Same deal, he'll run things by me, he'll, what would you do in this deal? And he showed me how to carve. Rex is an excellent carver. Rex and I have been in cow deals, horse deals, and he, uh, kind of guy, old time cowboy, you get it done. Belts and purses, uh, quite a number of them. And in fact, that's what I made all the time. And I've made that most of the time. And then saddles and uh, what they call breast collars, I've made several of those. But I always was interested in the leather. <clears throat> when I grew up, occasionally you'd find a cowboy would have what they called a hand carved saddle and I couldn't imagine how they could carve it. And I always had a kind of a passion for doing it. And I tried with old leather and tried to carve it. And it didn't turn out very well. And so I got the address of a Montana leather company in Butte. And uh, I just wrote them a letter and said I wanted to leather to carve belts and purses and a set of carving tools. And I had no idea what I was getting. And they sent them to me and I looked them over and kind of decided how they were supposed to work. job is to cut all the, all the parts so they fit. It's fit on a tree. The tree ordinarily was made out of rawhide, wood covered with rawhide. And then you've got to form the leather, which is wet, and form it to that tree. And you do it by stretching the leather and pressing it into place, or in some cases you've got to put gussets in and sew it. And so that's part of the key is to make everything fit. And uh, one of the critical parts is the seat of the saddle, which is pretty hard, and you can, some of the cuts you can only make one time, and they've got to fit the first time. No shortcuts. Uh, part of my deal now with these Bronx saddles is the experience I have. It's not rocket science, but there's, riggings have to be square, have to have good trees, good leather. Don't take shortcuts. Saddles specialize for certain things, and they, sit a little different. Cutting horse saddles are a little bit different than a roping saddle. Under the seat, it's, it's uh, hard to describe how a good seat is, it, but it's kind of like sitting in a good chair. It's hard to describe a, a poor chair from a good one, but there's a difference, and that's the way it is with a saddle. Born in 1928. My family had always been horse ranchers and raised hundreds of horses. Of course, I was always interested in horses, always wanted to be a cowboy like a lot of everybody grows up wanting to be a cowboy. But I had the advantage because I was right there, so I could, if I wanted to be, if you wanted to ride, go ahead and we've got this to do, so I had riding to do. And uh, I broke my first horse to ride it. I was 12 years old. where my ranch was. It had been a ranch site as long as anyone can remember. There was a, a line camp for some big ranch. I always, uh, after I had the land, I never lived there, but I always had cattle and horses. And then when I was teaching school, I'd go out and work in the summertime, I'd pasture cattle and work them out there, and that was a lot of fun. The high school rodeos came along, and they 
got involved in that, and so my son and daughter were both involved in that. People knew about it, and then they'd want their child to get some help, and they'd come to me. Then from then on, I had kids that I helped. Every year, I'd help one or two. From then, for, with the kids, it gives you, because they learn a little something about riding, and whether it's roping or whether it's working cutting horses. I asked Rex, I said, how many kids have you helped rope? How many kids have you helped in cutting? He said, I don't know. He didn't know, there's so many of them, he doesn't know. I would say, realistically, he's probably helped 50 kids cut. And even today, he helps those high school kids or has a horse and high school kids can ride. I just like to ride, I always like to ride, and like to work horses, something you like to do. So I've got patterns and what I do with them. See, I, I cut them out here. This is a technique a lot of them don't use, but I cut them out here. And then when I do it, I just tip this over and I got the bare leather wet and I pound it down that puts the pattern on here. I guess practice, like anything else, it says practice, practice, practice. And uh, you've got to have a little artistic ability to lay out the patterns and make them work. Or you can buy patterns and then the secret is working this swivel cutter, swivel knife. Rex, for his age, has been a lot of places, done a lot of things, and, and still going, and, and still living that lifestyle. He, he gets up in the morning, he goes out, feeds his horses, or he goes to his place out, out in the hills. He don't sit down. He's always going. I did pretty much what I wanted to do. Like I said, everybody wants to be a cowboy. And you do those things, and I think the Western way of life describes how this country was, was settled and formed. Funded by the North Dakota Council on the Arts and by the members of Prairie Public.